live two-night event begins tonight, 8, 7 central on ABC. Today on Katie from Hollywood, an exclusive Mary Tyler Moore Show reunion. I'm looking for a couple of broads about your size. Valerie Harper, Cloris Leachman, Betty White, George Engel, and the iconic Mary Tyler Moore. Get your hand off Mary's knee. I'm sorry that I forgot about that. Back to work and supporting Valerie Harper as she bravely battles terminal cancer. Don't go to the funeral until the day of the funeral. Don't miss your life while you're feeling good and you can do things. Where did you get that strength, Valerie? I'm really touched that we're off together. <laughs> I know. <laughs> did I like you? You've gone from cold in Minneapolis to hot in Cleveland. <laughs> Come on out, girl. Yay! The cast of Hot in Cleveland helps celebrate this historical TV moment. Your smile, who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile. Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. From Studio One in New York, it's Katie. Thank you so much. That, of course, is the theme song for the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I was singing it into my hairbrush through most of the 70s, and I can't get it out of my head these last few days. That show changed television and opened up a whole new world for girls who grew up watching it, including me. And if we couldn't turn the world on with our smiles, it did make us think we could make it on our own. Watching Mary Tyler Moore made me want to work at WJM-TV, or at least in the news business, and I did end up working as a local reporter at WTVJ in Miami. In fact, I found a clip of my work from back then in the early 80s. Yikes. Oh boy, here it goes. Let's take a look. Firefighters say initially that was a help. In Liberty City, Catherine Couric, News 4. You notice I was Catherine back then? I wanted to be taken seriously, so I was Catherine Couric. Anyway, maybe I wasn't quite ready for prime time, but the cast of the Mary Tyler Moore Show sure was, and they inspired a whole generation of us with their style, sass, and yes, spunk. With a flash of her megawatt smile and the toss of her beret, Mary Tyler Moore became America's sweetheart and a fresh-faced symbol of the modern working woman. Bill, Daddy, this is terrific having a whole evening to spend with you. A bad breakup led her character, Mary Richards, to WJM-TV in Minneapolis. She was 30, single, and proud of it. No, how old do I look? <laughs> Why head? <laughs> How old do I look? <laughs> Her sweetness paired well with the salty news director, Lou Grant, played by Ed Asner. You know what? You got spunk. Well, yes. I hate spunk. <laughs> After a long day at work, Mary came home to her brash BFF from the Bronx, who brought everyone down to earth. Valerie Harper's Rhoda Morgenstern. Rhoda, chocolate solves nothing. Cottage cheese solves nothing. Chocolate can do it all. Rhoda loathed the landlord, a stay-at-home mom named Phyllis Lindstrom, played by Cloris Leachman. Worse, it's her. <laughs> but the real happy homemaker was Betty White's Sue Ann Nivens who was never afraid to make a dish. Surely that isn't how a strawberry swirl is supposed to look. Or dish out an insult. Hello, dear. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I was in bed. Oh, good. Then you're alone. And anchorman Ted Baxter got more than a mouthful when he met Georgette Franklin, played by Georgia Engel, whose high-pitched voice won his heart. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to go right home and limber up my gam. If there was one headline we all learned from the WJM newsroom, it's this. With the help of a network of friends and plenty of laughs, we're going to make it after all. Aww. Well, great seeing you again, kids. We gotta go. <laughs> I got to sit down with the ladies of the Mary Tyler Moore Show on the set of Hot in Cleveland, where they were back at work together again for the first time in more than three decades. 
Can I just say, truly, sincerely, I am so thrilled and honored to be with all of you ladies. You have inspired me so much and were such a part of my life for so many years. Oh, and I don't so think sweet. I'd have this job <laughs> if it weren't for Mary Richards. Oh, and I mean that. They say if you can't see it, you can't be it. <laughs> and when I saw Mary Richards make it on her own yeah. and <laughs> drive in that Mustang <laughs> to that TV station in Minneapolis yeah. when I was in junior high, I thought, wow, I can have a career too. Uh, oh, sure. God. Do you realize how many young women and men you collectively influenced through no. this show, Mary? Come yeah. on. No. <laughs> I hear it all the time about Mary. Oh, Mary inspired me to do this. Every time I, anybody talks to me about it, they always say, Betty inspired them, <laughs> not Mary. <laughs> when you think back on the show, why do you all think it resonated so much for those years? There were things going on in the show that he hadn't seen before. Don't forget to take your pill. I won't. <laughs> In the 70s, women, young women, were living differently, and our show really reflected the reality of the lives. The romantic ideal of womanhood. He, yes. I mean, it's a drag saying you're 30 and single all the time. You know what it is. I know, I know. She had been dumped by a boyfriend, which a lot of women were experiencing, and she was trying to make it on her own. Your characters were also just so fun and funny and interesting and imperfect, except for Georgette and Mary. <laughs> I said I wouldn't mind some company. Well, all right, I'll, I'll have a Brandy Alexander. <laughs> Why did Mary Richards captivate and really capture the hearts of so many people, like this person sitting right here? <laughs> Thanks. I think it was because our writers um, wrote so honestly and with such love of comedy and yes. you know yes. and their dedication to keeping the comedy real i also think she was this rare combination of strength and and moxie mm -hmm. but also vulnerability yes yes, yes, there yes. Is. and I'm getting to sex pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> and sexy betty <laughs> I loved your clothes, and you looked so damn oh, good in oh, everything, everything you wore, perfect. Mary. Oh. It was so annoying. <laughs> I was so jealous. I was like, wow, your clothes were, I mean, she wore her clothes. The clothes never wore her. Here's that purse. Oh, thanks. I suddenly realized I didn't have a purse to match my new dress, and I really wanted to wear it today, so thanks a lot. You were so cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I guess I was. <laughs> why you think people were so attractive to Rhoda? Because they recognize themselves. Mary is who you wish you were. Oh. Rhoda is who you probably are. Uh. And Phyllis is who you're afraid you'll become. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. And it was adorable. You lied to me? You betcha. <laughs> It's saying the unsayable. Right. And she was sort of unfiltered. She, she kept trying, yes. right? This is Sue Ann Nibbins, your happy homemaker. What about Sue Ann Nibbins? What was it about her, Betty? Well, she was the neighborhood nymphomania. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so you always end up playing her. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Ann, I just caught a rerun the other day where she came in and she said, does this dress make me look cheap? And somebody said, yes. She said, oh, thank God. <laughs> and that was her, that was her attitude on life. Yeah. Georgia, what about Georgette? Why do you think her character was so incredibly appealing? I think the writers had fun with her because she was the slowest one of the group. Why didn't you fly in with us? I wanted to drive, and I had to ask a lot of directions, so I learned a lot about the people along the way. But sometimes having the wisest thing come out of Georgette's mouth, you can tell so much about people by driving through their state. And that made it more interesting. Pure stupidness is funny. <laughs> she was very honest, too. She would tell the truth just really beautifully and clearly and and clear the room <laughs> with her <laughs> candor. Yeah. yeah. And that voice, Georgia. Come on. I mean, the voice is so unique and, in, you know, just... Endearing. Endearing. <laughs> I want to see you married, Mary. And what about Phyllis Chloris? 
Well, look where they're sitting. I mean, that's all she cares about. <laughs> <laughs> Having me use her. Well, get so close. <laughs> to Mary. <laughs> so close. Can't, can't get in the middle there. <laughs> Still competitive after all these years, huh? <laughs> the thing is, they said they originally had Mary and Phyllis sort of as pals, and, and uh, Rhoda was the um, nemesis. And then the way she played Phyllis with this haute superiority. It's just that I have some uh, rather shattering news for you. Shattering uh, news? But it can wait. The boys said, this is great what she's doing. And they started writing to, to what she was doing. And then I was abrasive to her, but we became the, the pals, the friends. See what I mean? <laughs> and she hated it. <laughs> Meanwhile, 8MTM, after Mary Tyler Moore, you guys had all had thriving, exciting careers. You could have just said, this was great, I'm gonna get by on my residuals and live in Boca. Why did you want to keep going? And Well, for me, it's it, that I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and they seem to like that I do what I do. You've gone from cold in Minneapolis to hot in Cleveland. And, and what is it like for you all working together after 40 years? Is it is it crazy, weird, fun, what? Heaven. <laughs> yeah, it really is heaven. And none of us has changed. Well, really? we've done the best we can. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity has taken over. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't seen the other Glob girls in 50 years. What if we don't recognize them? I know. I mean, you and I look exactly the same. But they may have changed. It's really the truth. We all love the work, the process. How do you do comedy if you don't I... like each other? But if you do like each other, yeah. look over the years what you wind up with. You become... Um, even more than family. It's something that you can't explain to anybody. It's mm -hmm. just there. Up next... There were things going on in the show that he hadn't seen before. Behind the scenes of the TV show that made history and Mary Tyler Moore's biggest fear. You know, they didn't think it would be possible. Yeah, I didn't think so either. <laughs> and still to come... In January, you were given some news. Yeah, disastrous how Valerie Harper is coping with her terminal illness. That's later. There's something unfair at the heart of the game I love. It's time we change that. Head of the plate now. Hands of home. And my particular favorite, Aunt Yuku. <laughs> was one of the greatest moments of all time on the Mary Tyler Moore Show when the whole newsroom attends the funeral of Chuckles the Clown. Mary and everyone else get a very uncomfortable case of the giggles. Of course, everyone has had something like that happen to them at one time or another. It actually happened to my mom at one of my piano recitals when I was about 10 years old which was awful and hilarious. Meanwhile, the Mary Tyler Moore Show was a huge hit, and one of its leading ladies was so endearing, she actually got a spinoff series, Rhoda, which made TV history. When two people love each other, it's natural that they want to share each other's lives, because love is what matters most. Valerie, your wedding was watched by 50 million people. Yes, that's that right. It's the second most watched sitcom event ever. Do you guys know, little trivia question, <laughs> what the first one was? Uh, Lucy's Lucy Baby. Baby. Yes, when yeah. little Ricky was born on I Love Lucy. Right. But can you imagine 50 million? I mean, I would kill for, <laughs> for, for uh, you know, a fraction of that, and that that's, number. That was my favorite. Uh, when I get asked what was my favorite Rhoda segment, why? Because they were all there. Like, Can I tell then, you the story? What, what, sweetie? When you were going to do it, for whatever reason, Ted didn't want to do it, and I knew I'd be left out. And I got the courage to go up to Jim Brooks and say, I know um, Ted isn't doing it. I would like so much to be at, at Rhoda's wedding, and I don't have to have any lights. <laughs> and he made it happen. Oh, he did. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and great. he gave me the cutest little part, but I could be there with my girlfriend. I never knew that. <laughs> this always happens. I tell them not to get up, but they always get up. <laughs> then I say that, and they sit down. And when
one of the funniest lines in that whole thing was her telling a, a kind of boring Midwestern story. Oh, yeah. And we're all around there, and Ed's trying to laugh, and it's not working. And this one says, you know, as Phyllis, Georgette, dear, you, you know, know I love I you. I love you, dear. But trust me, that is not an interesting story. <laughs> it was so Phyllis. It was so perfect. And I'm so glad you were well, there. It was Jane Brooks' generosity. I wanted to be with you all. <laughs> I was supposed to pick her up for her wedding. Oh, I yeah. Her, and the, of course, the whole, of course, I forget. And she's trying to get to her wedding in a white dress. She finally takes the subway, and she has graffiti written all over her. <laughs> well, I just guess I, I owe you all an apology. <laughs> all right. I should have picked her up. It was my fault for forgetting. Don't you throw some cab driver out and drive yourself? <laughs> I finally end up Nobody at the last minute good. just arriving. Oh, Mary, and, I, and you, you don't hear me out loud, but I... <laughs> just saying so sorry to everybody. <laughs> but I love doing that. Yeah, that was fun. Because we were all together. Yeah. Both families, yeah. Well, you... I didn't care so much about that. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, but oh, what a precious time it was. She's famous for giving me lines. She said, you know, I don't know if I should have that joke. I think that's better for Val. It's a Rhoda line. Uh, Unbelievably generous and dear. She set the standard for all of us. Mary, everyone has said that about you, that you were so generous. And I beyond. think the fact that you let all these incredible actresses shine so brightly well, is a real they testimony to you. They shined on me, too. <laughs> yeah. You know, every, every day. Working with every one of them. Oh. Every day we would try to rehearse and do quickly, and uh, Mary was always perfect. She knew her oh. lines, and she never <laughs> made one mistake and never got a note that I ever heard of. And one time I said, oh, my God, poor Mary. You know, you're the star of it, and... Uh, so finally I said, oh, Mary, I'm so sorry. We're, we're, we're taking too much time or something. She said, oh, no, no. She said, you just create a little path and I just walk down it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite true, but very sweet yeah. and totally generous. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. nobody I knew about case. this lady was she loved doing it and she did it so well. But that wasn't where her heart was. Her heart, she wanted to be a dancer. Oh. <laughs> Dance, she was an amazing dancer. Lunch breaks. That's right. She would work her tail off. I she think did. of myself as a failed dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Not a successful actress. That's true. What Girlfriend. about you, Mary? Do you have a favorite episode? It would be the, the show where I wanted to go back to <clears throat> ballet class. That I thought I could do something, you know, a small theater, or you know, and again I failed. <laughs> but when oh, that was fine, it wasn't good enough. <laughs> but see what I mean about her wanting to be a dancer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I she was to be, so. Go ahead. Go ahead. She was so generous. She let me do a whole dance number, and the show was running way, way, way too long. This is a true story, and I heard them saying we might have to cut. Georgette's steam heat number, just too many lines, and, and Ted said, I'm not losing any of my lines, and, <laughs> and Mary and Ed Asner said, we can make ours shorter, and they made room for me to oh. do that. <laughs> we did that in the final show. We said, we want to be on the final show. They said, you're not in the newsroom. You guys have moved. You're in New York. And, and they wrote us in. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and so then we were right. fighting over you on the couch. <laughs> 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 Wanting to sit closer. That was the last, the final, the final Mary, which yeah. was a fantastic show. Remember when this <laughs> made They had in the office. Oh, over, and temporary. Then out, and, then, and then Mary goes... And looks around and turns off the light. And goes oh, I know. The door. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. Fantastic. Up next, how Valerie is coping with a devastating diagnosis. A lot of people, honestly, would get into bed and put the covers over their heads and cry. And how her friends of 40 years have rallied around her. I look around at these girls and I just, Me too. my heart fills up with so much oh, happiness and love and celebration and what life really is. Yeah. Get your hand off Mary's knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that for Still about. fighting over Mary. Yes. That's next. Just oh. <laughs>
Thank I'm you. so happy we're doing this. I'm so Thanks for coming out. Are you kidding? Leading your thrilled. life and, and rushing out to the this city. Is I know so you grew up. You were a baby. Me. I just love Valerie Harper, and I'm in awe of her courage and strength. Because back in January, I was supposed to interview her on this show, but she had to fly back to Los Angeles because of medical problems. That's when the doctors told her she had terminal cancer and three months to live. You know, I, I have to ask you, Valerie, obviously about your, your medical situation. Sure. Because I know in, in January you were given some some news. Yeah, disastrous. Uh... Devastating <laughs> news. And I have to say, I've always admired you so much, but the grace and the courage and the pluck Thank that you. you've shown, honestly. Yeah. I, I don't have a lot of symptoms, and my doctors are looking at that. So we're progressing. I certainly see what's ahead, what could possibly be tomorrow. In fact, I'm hoping I get through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've no. got to tell you, my dear, uh, my money's on you. Oh, I yeah. went through this. I went through this with my beloved Alan. But her positiveness and her yeah. up, everything is on the upside. Yeah. And that's so 90% of it, I, I promise you. I think it is, yeah. Oh, God, but I'm it's, so proud It's of so it. wonderful. I wouldn't have missed this for the world. And <laughs> where did you, where did you find Valerie? You know, a lot of people, honestly, would get into bed and put the covers over their heads and, you know. Cry. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to repeat something, Katie, that I've said. Don't go to the funeral until the day of the funeral. Don't miss your life while you're feeling good and you can do things. You Amen. can have your times to cry. You can really, you know, be in grief or say, why me and rage. And let it be there. Go through it and then move on from it and say, oh, my God, look at those daffodils. I got to, you know, I, I, or whatever it is. Um, and Where did you get that strength, though, Valerie? Where did you find that pluck? I just think that's the truth of life. See, right? I don't think there's anything else in the world except uh, this group and all this other extended group. This is it. It's all we got. And I thought, oh my God, I owe this to all the people that the people that come up to you, Mary, or any of us on the street, and say, oh, and they treat you like family. Mm -hmm. They treat you like they are related to you, right. and they are extended family. And I can tell you, the mail and stuff that I've gotten, and the uh. the remedies, and just unbelievable. But it's been from concern and love and support. It's almost like. I've had a memorial before leaving the planet. That's what it kind of feels like. And people are, are uh, I think, uh, forewarned if something should but happen. you're also helping so many people's attitude if they're in the same situation. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's what, what I, you're yeah. doing. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. But I, this, it, not terminal, but she, since she's 30, 32, has fought a really life-threatening and won year after year after year supported juvenile diabetes so it's it's uh i don't feel it's so courageous of me i don't see it as a big act of courage except for actors who are afraid to say they're sick because they won't work <laughs> yeah right. i think <laughs> actors are really afraid to say there's something wrong uh, i tell everybody i have a bunion <laughs> Well, I think you know, anyway, so Katie, brave. you know what I mean? Only That's fair. Right. You just dig down and... You don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but Mary, for you, because I know you and Valerie are very close friends. Yeah, they're yeah. very close. Very close, not just on television, but I in real life. Death. Yeah. And for you to be able to spend these precious days with her yes. must be a real gift. You bet it is. The gift to all of us that she came all the way from Greenwich. <laughs> <laughs> and can I share about the Monsignor? Oh, yes. My doctor said, don't fly. And she had call, uh, She called me a day later and said, can you come Thursday? And we're going to uh, do a, a prayer, a mass in the house. And I couldn't do it. But I just thought, what an incredible gift yeah. from my darling, beautiful yeah. friend. <laughs> Stop it, right so now. I was there Stop in it. spirit. End it. And I look around at these girls, and I just... Me too. My heart fills Love up with too. so much oh, God. happiness. Look at you, sweetheart. Happiness and love and celebration and what life really is. Yeah. Get your hand off Mary's knee. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. That I forgot Still about Still fighting that. over Mary. Oh, yeah. Yes, Ellie. <laughs> I want to just read this list because I think it's so instructive for all of us and everyone watching, which was your list, Valerie, about sort of keys to life. One of the things on your list is 
Don't let your fear today rob you of a fun life. If you're not here now, where the hell are you? <laughs> I've never been a fan of the good old days. For me, the best day has always been this one. And my mom always used to say, if you can learn from it, then do it. If not, forget about it. That was yesterday. Oh, that's great. That's great. Coming up, Valerie Bertinelli on losing her TV mom. She was an amazing life force. It was just wrong. Wrong what happened. Then... Valerie and her Hot in Cleveland co-stars special Mary Tyler Moore reunion. <laughs> Plus, why so many women hail Mary. Who can turn the world on with her smile. That's later. <laughs> Who can turn the world on with her smile. I think for me at least, it just made me believe you really could do anything. It just said, look, you can do this too. Go ahead, Mary, read them. Last week we were at 1.1. It was something that was accessible and that was interesting and inspiring. I wanted to be Mary Richards. You know, I'm really lucky. I am so lucky. I remember the apartment and dreaming about, can I have my own apartment one day? Hi. And this show had so many great messages. To stand up to a man and say, you know what, I deserve this. Oh, I think we have something to talk about, all right. You're gonna make it. I dare you to find one person who hasn't secretly looked around and then done the hat toss. So there really is something about Mary. The show, which won 29 Emmys in its seven seasons on the air, helped shape and define a whole generation of women, and we owe Mary big time. But would you believe in the beginning, Mary Tyler Moore thought her show might not make it after all. Well, Mary, what do you think? Here it is. Wow. Apparently, the first couple of episodes in front of the studio audience did not go over that well, Mary. And I, I heard that you were very worried about the show. Yeah. Why? I, I was. Well, because it didn't seem to be going over very well. <laughs> Uh, and I'm Mary Richards. Uh, hello. What was wrong? What wasn't clicking? I don't know. I think it was really that I had been just off the Van Dyke show, which was hugely successful. Just an average housewife who needs kissing desperately. Oh. And uh, the two main characters were so beloved. Um, and they had a difficult time separating me from that, putting me in a new situation with all new friends. And, uh, you know, it takes a while for a, a, an audience a to, get to, to get another hit. Uh, yeah, right. right. Oh, my God. I, I remember Harry. being in Oregon before we started. We hadn't met each other or anything. I just got hired. And I was in some restaurant there, and I overheard somebody say, Oh, Mary Tyler Moore. What is she? The, the idea of being some woman carrying a show. Who does she think she is? Yeah. <laughs> Not who does she think she is, but... How could that, it's ridiculous. You know, they didn't think it would be possible. Yeah, uh, right. I didn't think so either. <laughs> but I'm glad you I wrong. <laughs> you talk about it reflecting the era, and I always appreciate how television can change minds, right? Because mm -hmm. it's such a powerful medium, and you all it tackled issues like sexual harassment, women's yes. wages. Right. I think the Mary Tyler Moore show was the first time the word gay was that true? On television? Really? Right? Brother. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you remember that? <laughs> what, what, what a show. I tried to fix Rhoda up with my brother. No, you've so thrown a Mary to have him. Yeah, but if somehow or other he ended up with you. Yeah, he liked me. I was so upset about and it. And not me? No. <laughs> he is witty. He is attractive. He's successful. He's single. He's gay. <laughs> and that was news to you and the audience laughed so long they were just so surprised right yeah. and then the rejoinder was oh Rhoda I'm so relieved oh, Rhoda. <laughs> better gay than marrying dumb awful Rhoda <laughs> it was really great it so reflected life Katie it reflected women just call me Nancy he loves to call me Mrs. Almond Lynn we've been married for three weeks. <laughs> Our 
executive producers sought out women writers because I, Jim used to say, you know, we don't do that pantyhose and nail polish stuff great. I mean, we can write women. And I think he was right to reach out to Treva and Charlotte mm -hmm. and so many young uh, comedy writers. And they weren't in television at that time till Mary's show. Mm -hmm. Up next, the cast of Hot in Cleveland and the other reunion that had Valerie Bertinelli fighting back the tears. She was an incredibly, is an incredibly special presence in my life. Plus... Oh, my God. Are you photobombing my interview? You'll never guess who crashed our set. That's later. With Matt Spriggs. ABC7. Elka. <laughs> Maybe. Wait a minute. <laughs> who the hell are you guys? I don't care. <laughs> Famous for reuniting some of the biggest names in television, the ladies of Hot in Cleveland are at it again, bringing together the cast of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. For the first time in 36 years, Hot in Cleveland is already one of the hottest shows on television. Add the great dames of the Mary Tyler Moore Show, and suddenly, now more than ever, all eyes are on Cleveland. Looking for a couple of broads about your size, but much older looking. <laughs> Is it fun, Betty, for you to be back with the gang? That's what I want for my birthday. Reunite the old gang. Oh, yes, but not any more fun than being with this gang, I'll tell you for sure. And I will get my hand off your knee. <laughs> <laughs> Are they in character? Are they back as, as... They're different characters, but it's little things that you'll go, oh, oh, that's how Phyllis and Rhoda were, but it's not Phyllis and Rhoda. So it's just, it's the same but different. Wait a minute. Did I like you? You always said you did. I'm a pathological liar. Well, in that same spirit, I always liked you. <laughs> From the get-go, I mean, the table read was hilarious. Yeah. And it's it's that whole idea, I think, of coming home to the place you love, with people you love. Hey, what's with the glasses? Remember yesterday when I said you look good? Mm -hmm. I realized I needed glasses. There was a moment yesterday where um, we were about ready to start a scene, and the five of you were sitting around the table just talking, and it was complete silence everywhere, just watching the five of you talk about old stories that you had. And then you saw everybody's cell phones come out and just gradually circle the table, <laughs> because it was just such a fabulous moment. Uh, I can't believe these girls. How lucky can we get? The Hot in Cleveland girls, we're like a unit. We all adore each other. Yeah. The Mary Tyler Moore Show, we all adored each other. Golden Girls, we all adored each other. Mm -hmm. it, that's such a, such a piece of the action, as is the live studio audience. <laughs> that live studio audience really brings so much. They don't know how much they have to do with the show. Oh, it's, there's no business like this business, Katie. It's such a privilege to be in it. You don't ever take it for granted. And, and I know, Valerie, you recently, well, I guess two years ago, had a reunion of your own with Bonnie Franklin. Mm -hmm. That's my boyfriend! <laughs> Climb down from him. You are not at work, and he is not a pole. <laughs> How meaningful and important was that for you? Because I know she was like a mother to mm -hmm. you, wasn't she? She was. Um, it meant a lot to me, it meant, and I think it meant a lot to her. Um, we got to reconnect in a way that we hadn't been able to um, work-wise, and we always see each other, you know, we, last time we had probably seen each other standing in line at the pharmacy, but um, she was an incredibly, is an incredibly special presence in my life, and I'll miss her terribly until I see her again. How old were you when you started? Fifteen. Fifteen when you started. Yeah, and she was 31. And she played my mother, <laughs> you know. But she was she was an amazing life force that was it was just wrong, wrong what happened. But um, 
doesn't make her life any less. She was really, really special. And I was say, watching them together was delightful because you could see the genuine affection. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't, oh, how nice to see you again. It was genuine warmth. Yeah, and I, I adored her. Up next, oh an unexpected visitor surprises our stars. But it's okay, you blocked my camera, I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> and later... Can we sing the theme song that I was like, that is too cheesy, but I am so cheesy and I know all the words. <laughs> Who can take a nothing day? That's coming up. The new season of TV Land's Hot in Cleveland kicks off on June 19th with a very special live episode. It will be a major TV event, but that's just the beginning. Some incredible guest stars will be gracing their set, including Carol Burnett and Tim Conway. Look for Mary's episode on September 4th. I learned firsthand you never know what's going to happen on the set of Hot in Cleveland. <laughs> One at a time, can maybe you tell me, uh, except for Betty, obviously, because it's a unique situation for her, but how did the Mary Tyler Moore show influence you? I'll tell you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Very funny. This is Todd and Sean. Of course, you guys are producing Hot in Cleveland. Yes. So what is it like working with all these ladies? Well, Todd, three of them are great. <laughs> Todd's, Todd's around much more than I am. I come visit every once in a while. Are you guys letting Katie yes, down camera? Yes, now we look at Katie's Oh, no, it's okay. You blocked my camera. I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to have yes. you block the camera. Like, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look, at, watch this, watch this. Interesting, not so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that is so mean. <laughs> Can you believe they're them. running this show? I know. <laughs> no wonder this is such oh a fun set. You've got what? these guys. It has and... nothing to do with them. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> do you miss being in front of the camera, though, when you're doing all this? No, it's not obvious. <laughs> There's one there and one there, too. I'm actually used to actually about five more cameras. I sleep with about ten cameras now. No, I, do, I actually did an episode. I can give a terrific salute, double finger guns with a mouth click, or I can go contemporary with a roof raise. And, um, I mean, I, I like doing both, but, um, but this particular show, I love coming to visit and just seeing, seeing the gals. And, and uh, is this the first time you've gotten to know Betty? Because uh, uh, yeah. You, yeah. Betty, once you once said to me a long time ago, when Will and Grace was a hit, you said it was much nicer being a part of a hit show than, oh, than not. Oh, and it is. It yeah. is such a fun. Yeah. And you just have the, the Midas touch. You've been in hit show after hit show. Oh, it's, how lucky can an old broad be? Yeah, it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing. But, you know, just looking at these gals, I mean, these are all incredible actresses. Very incredibly talented women. So it must be thrilling, Todd, to, to work with them in all seriousness. It's, exciting. it's, it's so exciting. We, we always said, you know, even shooting the pilot, we all, everybody says, did you know? And you're supposed to say no, but we all knew. Yeah. You know, we all knew from at, at the end of the evening when we shot the pilot that this was extremely special. <laughs> it was kismet. Yes. When we did the pilot, I had written into my contract that it, should the pilot get picked up, because my schedule was too busy, I couldn't be part of it. Well, we got picked up in three weeks, and so they came and asked me if I would do it. I said, but it, it, I was in my contract, and, and I have the backbone of a jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't We're, let her out. Uh -uh. <laughs> anyway, we want this to go back to be yes. an interesting interview, so we shall leave uh, now. Oh, thank you. Thanks very thank much. You. Thank you very much. You guys. All right, good to see you guys. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. What impact did the Mary Tyler Moore show have for each of you. Wendy, tell me. I just thought she was one of the most fabulous, infectiously fun, sort of dingy, gorgeous women I'd ever seen. And I loved her style. I still emulate that. Me too. I think it's the classic, perfect way to dress. Those little cigarette um, pants mm -hmm. oh, and the ballet cigarette pants flats and the white men's shirt yeah. and, the, oh no, and the ballet flats. Right. Yeah, I'm all over that too. <laughs> what about you, Jane, in terms of the, did you watch the Mary Tyler Moore show growing up? Well, I didn't. I came to it um, when I came to this country. You know, it was always on. Um, and, and that's how I discovered it. And for me, it was like to see women, attractive women, being funny. 
uh, on television. You know, that, that was a new thing for me. Um, and realizing that that might be something I wanted to do. What about you, Valerie? What were your memories? I can remember sitting in my den with my mom and it being a family night. It was Saturday night and watching that show and I, rem I knew I wanted to be an actress then. I think I was 10, 11, 12 years old, whatever it was, and just starting. And I thought, that's what I want to do. This, I think, for all of us has just been so it. inspirational and, and just such a gift. Up next, love is all around. The Mary Tyler Moore ladies hit their highest note yet. You girl and you should know it. <laughs> next. I'm Tom. I'm Sue. I'm Carol. I treasure you people. when they turned off the lights of the WJM TV newsroom back in 1977. And we did really treasure those people. And what about the men of the Mary Tyler Moore Show? Lou Grant, a.k.a. Ed Asner, is still busy acting. The 83-year-old just wrapped up Grace on Broadway with Paul Rudd. Gavin McLeod, who played the wisecracking Murray, the news writer, went on to be Captain Steubing of the Love Boat, and after that became the ambassador on board Princess Cruise Lines. How appropriate. <laughs> and of course, who could forget the irrepressibly bombastic Ted Baxter, the quintessential anchor man? Well, as we all remember, Ted Knight sadly died of cancer in 1986. They were the men behind the great women of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. We'll have more behind the scenes moments and more of my conversation with the ladies on katiecurric.com. But before we go, we have one final mo moment to share with you. It's not often you sit down with TV icons and so we thought we needed a big finish. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And look at this. Can we sing the theme song that I was like, that is too cheesy, but I am so cheesy and I know all the words. <laughs> sing it. Do, do you? It. Go ahead. Do you know you the words? I can't sing it by myself. Maybe we'll okay. With her smile. Her smile. Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With each little step and every move that you show. <laughs> this is eyewitness